Live from KZ12, the night beat starts right now. We begin tonight with a San Antonio police officer taken to the hospital just a few hours ago after his police unit collided with a stolen car. The suspects inside that stolen car, juveniles. Police tell the night teams, Camelli Juarez, this is just the latest instance in a troubling trend they've been seeing. I just heard a loud bang, boom, and what's going on? That loud boom was the sound of a stolen car crashing into a San Antonio police car. This woman was staying at the Studio Suites Hotel just off of I-10. When she looked out her window, she saw several juveniles running and officers chasing them. I just seen the two juveniles running, and then I seen the cop like right behind them stop, but I, I couldn't see if it was a taser in his hand or a gun, I don't know. But he was calling at them to yeah, stop. like stop, stop. Authorities say those three juveniles who ran out of the car were eventually caught and the officer in the police car involved in the crash was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. It was it was a helicopter. He was just going around everywhere and then another one, a drone came down. It's like, oh God. A sergeant on scene says the Raven or drone team was following the car because it was reported stolen. Helicopters tracked the stolen car to the motel. And when that officer involved in the crash responded to the scene, that's when the juvenile driving the stolen car crashed into the patrol car. And then I have kids, so it's even a scarier situation. Chief Probation Officer Jill Mata deals with juveniles who are referred to the Juvenile Probation Department. I mean, stolen cars have always been an issue, but we are seeing an uptick of young people stealing those cars. Based on data from July of last year to this year, there's been a 281% increase of juveniles in Bear County referred for unauthorized use of a motor vehicle or stealing cars. Motha says the kids they see involved in these kinds of crimes are usually working in a larger illegal organization. We would surmise it's because they're they're working with an organization to have those cars resold. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. All righty, take a look outside with live cam right now. Pretty nice as we're looking out at downtown San Antonio. It's still 86 degrees though at 10 o'clock. And you know, today was another hot one. Today was a day where you looked off in the distance from San Antonio and you could see rain, but it was still very hot. We got up to 100 degrees for the high temperature today in San Antonio, just one degree shy of the record. It wasn't too bad this morning if you were an early bird and uh, temperatures were right around 73 degrees. Here's a look at highs across South Central Texas. Got up to 105 in Del Rio, 96. 7 in Rock Springs, 99 in Kerrville, 102 in Hondo, 103 in New Braunfels, and 101 in Gonzales. All right, in the forecast, we're going to talk about a few things. Firstly, we'll talk about how this week, pretty much only isolated rain through Thursday. I know that may not be what you want to hear. But here's the good news. We are going to see a weak front move through. That means it's not going to be as hot. We may not even see the triple digits at all this week. And a silver lining, it does look like we will have slightly better rain chances by the weekend. So if you're getting your kids ready uh, for school, uh, you can see that uh, I have the wrong graphic loaded up here real quick. Let me get you the right graphic for you. If you're getting kids ready for school, 74 in the morning tomorrow, and then in the afternoon, it's going to be a hot one. Temperatures are going to climb to 98, but that's a lot better than the triple digits, isn't it? So lots to talk about in the forecast, including those isolated rain chances in parts of South Central Texas. Saw three inches of rain. I'll show you which neighborhoods got lucky with the rainfall coming up. All right, we'll look forward to that. Thank you, Sarah. Well, even with those record breaking heat and record low water levels we've seen this summer, some businesses across Canyon Lake are still calling the summer of 2023 a success. Yeah, while the struggles do exist, the night team's Avery Everett shows us how businesses found new ways outside of the water to find success this summer. Darren Hammonds designed this home with customers in mind. I just like to take care of people. But this weekend, Equinox Inn. It's probably a better view outside. At Canyon Lake is sitting empty. This is one of five or six Friday nights in six years that we're off. And it's just kind of a, well, what do we do with our time now? Hammond says September is one of her slower months. And, but the picture. But she's able to sit at ease. <laughs> knowing this summer, she had success. June, July and August were all our best months outside of 2022. With record breaking heat and ongoing drought, Business owners across Kamal County were concerned about what tourism would look like for summer of 2023. 
Even a week after Labor Day, there's still some activity out here on Canyon Lake, but the water levels here are actually the lowest on record. I mean, I'm standing at the water's edge, and as you take a few steps back, you can see it's nothing but dry rocks and soil, and businesses say, well, that's a hard selling point. So many of our boat ramps are closed because the boats can't enter the water safely. So that has put a, a strain on some of the outfitters that we refer people to. The Chamber of Commerce says it learned a lesson during summer 2022's dry spell, and that was highlighting the Canyon Lake community away from the lake itself. I think what it's done is it's really pushed people outside their comfort zones out here um, to kind of look for other things to do. A lot of our business is rooted in small town, good, uh, you know, old fashioned, just small business. No, but this is a little library area. To Hammonds, what's to come next is still unwritten. People are waiting longer to book. And is it because of the weather? Is it because of the heat? Is it because of the economy? We don't know. But she's going to keep making the beds and keeping the lights on, ready for her next round of guests. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Switching to politics now, tomorrow the impeachment trial continues for Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton over corruption allegations. Paxton is accused of bribery and abuse of office. The trial started Tuesday, and since then, a list of former deputies have testified against him. On Friday, their testimony included the mention of an extramarital affair. In the week ahead, Paxton's lawyers are expected to start calling witnesses. At the end, the Senate members will serve as the jury. A two-thirds majority is needed to convict Paxton, Paxton and remove him from office. Condolences tonight for legendary Texas singer and songwriter Charlie Robeson, who has died just days after turning 59. A Bandera native, Robeson was a mainstay on country charts until a procedure on his throat left him unable to sing back in 2018. A family representative told the Associated Press he died earlier today in a San Antonio hospital after suffering cardiac arrest. A San Antonio police officer was sent to the hospital after investigators say a drunk driver crashed into their patrol car. It all happened just after midnight this morning in the 12,800 block of I-10 West. Police say that officer tried to pull over the suspected drunk driver for speeding, but the driver refused to stop. They eventually drifted over a lane divider into the back of a moving truck and it turned over and spun out. A passenger in the truck was also taken to the hospital. Meanwhile, the 21-year-old suspected drunk driver was booked on DWI. And a 34-year-old man is behind bars after SAPD says he was stalking someone. Take a look. This is Zachary Serena. He was arrested last night after police received several complaints that he was allegedly frequently harassing and showing up to his victim's residence. And now Serena was also charged with unlawful carrying of a weapon. Police arrested him at his home without incident, and he was booked into the Bear County Jail. San Antonio police investigating a shooting that started with the bar fight and ended with gunshots at the victim's house. Police have not said where it started, but the home where the shots were fired is located in the 16,500 block of Pleasanton Road. A man at the house told officers he was outside talking with his brother last night when the three pickup trucks drove by and he heard gunshots. The man's brother was shot in the leg and grazed by another on his side and is stable at the hospital. No arrests have been made. Well, the death toll from that powerful earthquake that struck Morocco Friday night now stands at more than 2,100, and at least 2,000 others are injured. Those staggering numbers are only going to rise as first responders make their way through remote mountain villages that were shaken by this earthquake. ABC's Rhiannon Ali has the latest on this devastation. Terrifying videos show the moment that deadly 6.8 magnitude earthquake rocked Morocco causing panic at this wedding. People running in the street as dust and debris falls from above. This man barely escaping with his life. Ancient buildings made from a mixture of concrete structure and earth stood no chance against the powerful quake. Rebecca Tremblay is visiting from Los Angeles. All the walls literally felt like 
Play-Doh and the floor just felt as if it was melting underneath my knees. Rescue teams now have the difficult task of trying to dig through the rubble to find any possible survivors. This person pulled out, injured, but alive. In the village of Terradont, residents now comforting each other. This man says two of his daughters died when the ceiling collapsed on them as they slept. Another man lost his wife, daughter, parents, and sister-in-law. <laughs> ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge traveled closer to the epicenter on Sunday in the high Atlas Mountains, 45 miles south of Marrakesh. Well, the scale of the tragedy here is summed up by this woman collapsed on the ground. We're told she lost eight members of her family in the quake. And the grief here is heavy in the air. Thousands lining up to donate blood. We saw on the news that they need donation for blood, and I didn't even think twice. Families now spending another night sleeping outside, too scared to return to their damaged homes amid the continuing aftershocks. Rihanna Nally, ABC News, New York. Coming up in about 20 minutes, history untold in Alamo Heights. How African-American high schoolers who went to school during integration reflect on their experience decades later. Plus, the heat hitting ranchers hard when it comes to feeding their livestock. We dive into the price of hay and tell you why demand is expected to outpace supply as we near the fall and winter. And the families of three people killed in a racially motivated mass shooting laid their loved ones to rest over the weekend. How they are remembering victim Gerald Galliott. Next on the night beat. The funerals for the three black people killed in a racist rampage shooting in Florida all happened this weekend. Friends and relatives shared memories of their loved ones while ministers and activists called for action against hate crimes and gun violence. Aaron Farrar from our sister station in Jacksonville tells us how Gerald Galleon will be remembered from the third and final funeral from this weekend. A black and gold casket carries the body of Gerald Galleon. Family and friends, many wearing hints of royal blue, walk into St. Paul Church of Jacksonville to honor a man who shouldered many titles. Son, brother, cousin, friend, but his favorite was dad. They took something so valuable from our family. And we are hurting. We are hurting. A long time, my life would never, ever be the same. He used to come see me every day, check up on me. When I had nobody, I had him. I always had him. Galleon was one of three people shot dead two weeks ago at a Dollar General in Grand Park. Innocent victims of what the FBI says was a racist hate crime. God. Galleon was praised for being joyful, God. eager to help, and dependable. His longtime boss even describing him as one of the best employees she ever had. He loved everybody, and he was loyal to the end. No matter what the situation was, Gerald always found a way to smile. And that's the only way I could find peace and Celeste in this time. During this feel bad that something so evil could happen to such a good person. I'm tired of us crying and grieving with no plan. Even in death, Galleon right? is inspiring others. We love Bishop her. John Guns, who gave we the eulogy, sure she announced he would be naming a fatherhood initiative after Galleon. It would be within an organization that Guns established called Operation Save Our Sons. The church also is planning to start a scholarship fund for Galleon's young daughter. Family says Galleon loved with all of his heart. His sister says now this family will turn their hurt, their pain, their anger and grief into what Galleon did so well, love. So today, when you leave, please spread more love. Don't hate on this person, don't hate on that person. We gotta unite together and we gotta start making a change because our kids, are, they need us. A devoted father and friend taken away from this world but left a lasting mark while he was here. Again, that was Aaron Farrar from our affiliate there in Jacksonville. Back here at home happening tomorrow, Police Chief William McManus and District Attorney Joe Gonzalez will be together at a District 4 Public Safety Town Hall. That town hall is scheduled to start at 6 tomorrow evening at the St. Rose of Lima Catholic Church over on Marbach Road. We do plan to live stream all of that for you on all of our KSAT platforms if you can't make it.
Something happening tomorrow as well that a lot of people are looking forward to. Driver's license offices around Texas also planning to reopen after being closed for more than a week. The Texas Department of Public Safety began changing their computer system back on September 1st, but they underestimated how long it would take to upgrade. Anyone who had an appointment between September 5th through the 8th and hasn't rescheduled yet is asked to email Texas DPS customer service with your name and preferred driver's license office for help. I'm certainly looking forward to a week with uh, maybe, just maybe, no triple digits. Yeah, and some rain chances. That would be nice, too. Uh, well, yeah, at least there's going to be a few rain chances. Now, not as much as I would hope. I mean, I think we need drought-busting rain, and we're just not going to get it this week. But there is a small chance for rain. And other than tomorrow, I think it's a safe bet we're not going to see 100 degrees. Tomorrow we'll be close at 98. Let's go ahead and take a look at the day today. We got up to 100 degrees for the high. That was after a pretty... A uh, nice morning uh, at 73 degrees early this morning. You can see that we're nine degrees above the average and just one degree shy of the record set back in 1893 and in 1940. But again, today with a high of uh, 100, that is our 74th 100 degree day this year. Not only are we first place for the most 100 degree days in a year, but we beat out the, the competition 2009 by 15 days, two more weeks of triple digit weather this year than we saw back in 2009 and in uh, last year, 2022. And as we look ahead to the forecast, as Tim was mentioning, really our highs are going to be below 100 degrees from the mid to upper 90s generally. Still warmer than the average of about 91, but not nearly as hot as it has been the last several days in San Antonio. Now we saw some rain west of San Antonio today. Uh, it was just a little too far west to uh, make it to San Antonio, uh, but these areas missed out on the rain yesterday, so it's a little bit of an evening out of rainfall. Uh, as far as uh, rain goes, rainfall amounts near Tarpley, about two to three inches of rain. Hondo itself, about a quarter of an inch of rainfall in Hondo. And then uh, out to the west a little bit further near Camp Wood, about two inches of rain, about two inches of, of rain uh, just to the west of Lakey. Now near uh, northwestern Kerr County, three inches of rain and take a look at Rock Springs. Rock Springs and some areas saw three to four inches of rain, even some flooding in some places there nearer to Rock Springs. Things are quiet right now. We've only really got an isolated shower in Edwards County and I expect it to be quiet for the remainder of the night. As we look at the weather setup, that high is off to the west enough to allow for that northerly flow in the atmosphere. That's why we've had isolated rain the last couple of days, uh, but here's the thing that's coming a little bit further on down the line. Here's that weak cool front that's going to be moving through Texas later on this week, particularly on Tuesday, and temperatures behind this front are cool, crisp, cool fall air in Colorado where it's 57 in Denver. Now we are not going to get that cool. Hate to burst your bubble, but we are going to be seeing, as I showed you, temperatures at least closer to seasonably average. Average. Now, in the week ahead, we're going to have better rain chances near San Angelo and Dallas than in San Antonio. This is through Thursday, so don't get your hopes up for drought busting rain. In fact, rain chances will be about 20% every single day through Thursday, but we are slightly more optimistic for the upcoming weekend. So your forecast, your KSAT 12 hour forecast waking up at 74, maybe a sprinkle early in the morning just with that extra cloud cover. But it's going to be a sunny day quickly, mostly sunny and 90 at noon and then still hot in the afternoon, but avoiding the triple digits 98 for the high temperature tomorrow afternoon in San Antonio. Elsewhere, it's going to be 101 in Del Rio, 102 in Catula, but up in the hill country, 95 in Kerrville, 97 in Canyon Lake, 99 in Hondo. It'll be 95 in Lotus, 94 in Bernie, Bulverde and 98 in New Braunfels and in Seguin. So as I mentioned, Mentioned, only isolated rain through Thursday. Chances only 20%, but it's possible. And then by the weekend, we bump that up a little bit more and temperatures come down Saturday and Sunday. Hoping we can up those rain chances even more as we head closer to the weekend and get a better 2020 vision. Hey, today marks the peak of Atlantic hurricane season. Mm -hmm. I have got a look at Hurricane Lee, whose track has moved a little bit closer to parts of the northeast coast. I'll show you that coming up.
All right. Thank you, Sarah. I've had enough summer. I'm going to head north and get a taste of fall before all of you. <laughs> exactly. All, get all right. Larry's there. waiting in the wings. He's going to give us a taste of what's on instant replay right after this. It finally happened. The NFL regular season kicked off Thursday night with the Detroit Lions upsetting the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. And today was the first full Sunday with 14 games for a preview of what's on instant replay. Here's our Larry Ramirez. A couple more upsets today. Yes, and that's why you're so happy because NFL games that count. That's right. That's right. right. Here. Houston Texans opened the D'Amico Ryan's era at the Baltimore Ravens coming up tonight on instant replay. It wasn't what we wanted and uh, got to just be better overall myself. Got to make more plays, got to check the football, hold the football, um, and really just get it out on time. C.J. Stroud didn't have a bad game, but he could not produce a touchdown drive for the Texans who dropped their season opener 25-9. C.J. didn't turn it over, which is good, but the Texans could not run the ball, and that was bad. Our grit, you know, put our greatness on display. Jeff Trailer and his UTSA Roadrunners beat G.J. Kinney and his Texas State Bobcats 20 to 13. It was a tough game for both coaches because they go way back. Now, will quarterback Frank Harris, who left the postgame presser in a boot, will he be ready for Army Friday night? That's our poll question tonight. The Dallas Cowboys played at the New York Giants tonight to close out the first Sunday in the NFL season. Plus, we got the best of BGC Week 3, Nalissa Smith and the Indiana Fever, and a scholar athlete from Antonia. And that and more tonight on Instant Replay. Love the stone, the, the, the just faces in Tuscaloosa. I know, right? Stunned. Boo and, a, hoo. and a big smile over Boo here. Boo-hoo. I can feel the heat from her <laughs> smile over there. All right. Still ahead on the night beat. History untold at Alamo Heights. How students that started school at Alamo Heights High School during integration are reflecting on their, in, their experience decades later.